This is a high yield microbiology question for the step one for you guys. I understand that when you are trying to remember the microbiology, the characteristics of all of the organisms, gram positive, gram negative, spore forming, non spore forming, these types of things, it can get very fucking complicated very fucking fast. Okay? So I can preach at you one question here. We can learn this. That's, that's great. But the answer for this question, I've also created a nice pretty diagram, a nice flow chart. So you have many organisms and you say, oh, that's characterized, like that's organized really well. That's on my Instagram. Okay. So I obviously upload all of the questions, the videos there. Melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Nice pretty diagram to go with this question. All right. And also before we get started, hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Hit the like button. Let's get this to all time highs and hit the bell if you want notifications. Now, let's start the fucking question. 35-year-old woman, she's been hospitalized six days following a cholecystectomy. She has cramping, lower left quadrant pain, and bloody stools for two days, and she's been on broad-spectrum antibiotics throughout her hospitalization. Questions just asking how we diagnose the most likely causal organism and what are its microbiology characteristics. So this question's difficult because this is C. difficile, okay, Clostridium difficile, spelled difficile. I've heard it pronounced different ways. Now, this is challenging because many resources will say that C. diff has watery stools, okay? Now, this isn't my opinion. This is something I've seen on the 2CK NBMEs, where even when I first saw the question, I was like, wait, really? What the fuck? Like, bloody stools? It can be bloody. And it also gave a patient where they had lower left quadrant pain. And it's challenging because lower left quadrant pain sounds like diverticulitis, which will be elderly, first of all. It would never be in a young, or I sh we should never say never in medicine. Very unlikely to be in a young patient. Lower left quadrant pain, bloody stools. But your cine enterocolitica can also present with pseudoappendicitis, okay? So appendicitis like pain and bloody stools. But that's going to be right lower quadrant, not left lower quadrant. And that was wrong answer on that question. As I said, it was C. diff. So, we, let's just go through our answer choices sequentially here. When we are trying to diagnose C. diff, do we do stool culture or stool toxin test? Stool culture, wrong fucking answer. It's what every student chooses, okay? We're gonna do stool A, B toxin test. The toxin of C. diff causes colonocytic necrosis secondary to interfering with the cytoskeleton of the colonocytes, okay? so. We do stool toxin test. That's our starter. And it's a gram positive. It's not a gram negative. We could go on a 40 minute tangent as far as all the gram positives and gram negatives, every little detail about them. How long are we going to make this clip? But the, the point is it's gram positive. Okay. And is it a caucus or a rod? It's a rod. It's the same thing as uh, saying bacillus. You assimilate will almost always just say rod rather than bacillus, but you should just know that they're the same thing. And then it's spore forming. Okay, so stool toxin test, not stool culture. It's gram positive. It's a rod. It's spore forming. That's C. diff. Now, just some other high yield info for you. If you are asked for the mechanism of disease and they have bacterial overgrowth or germination of spores, the answer is germination of spores. And some students say, wait, but I don't get it because wouldn't, don't you get bacterial overgrowth of the C. diff? Apparently, apparently when you give antibiotics, you're killing off all the normal flora, which allows the C. diff proportionally, relatively, to over-proliferate. But apparently on an absolute level, there isn't bacterial overgrowth because you've killed off so much normal flora. That's why it's the wrong answer, okay? Germination of spores is what they want. It's nosocomially acquired, so hospital acquired, where not all patients who are on antibiotics are going to get C. diff. So there's been some sort of uh, acquisition of the spores nosocomially, almost always. And when the patient is on antibiotics, such as clindamycin, uh, cephalexin, or just other cephalosporins, ampicillin classic, uh, that can help precipitate a C. diff episode. And then we treat with oral vancomycin. Okay, As of February 2018, the guidelines are just straight up oral vanc not metro okay used to be a big algorithm 
uh, it's not Metro anymore. You just go straight up Oral Vank. But don't worry, the USMLE is not going to get uh, pedantic about the treatment beyond just Oral Vank. That's it. Don't worry about Fidaxamycin, Rifampin, or, or sorry, Rifaximin, other antibiotics. Don't worry about that. Just Oral Vank for USMLE. Now, I should also point out that uh, our non-spore forming uh, gram positives, just Listeria and Carinobacterium, other spore forming gram positive rods. Okay, I promise you, I'm not going to get too de too detailed right now, but just uh, non spore forming gram positive rods. That's going to be Listeria with tumbling motility and Carinobacterium diphtheriae, and then our spore forming gram positive rods. We've got the Bacillus cereus, Bacillus anthracis. And then we have the clostridia, so perfringens, difficile, tetany, botulinum. As I said, you know, very fucking complicated, very fast. Okay, there's a lot we can discuss. We just want to keep things concise here. So I think rather than just overextending this clip, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll keep this consolidated. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to hop over to my Instagram in order to see the beautiful flow chart we have here, melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. And I appreciate your time. That's it.